Aloha. How are you today? My name is Master Paul and I am very pleased to be with you here on today's Facebook live stream. I've been doing Facebook live streaming now for about four to five months and each day Monday through Friday at the same time 2 p.m. Hawaiian time, 4 p.m. Pacific time, 7 p.m. Eastern, uh, 5.30 a.m. in India, 11 a.m. in Australia, and about midnight in the UK, I bring the wisdom teachings and foundational <coughs> practices from Dr. and Master Shah, who is my teacher and spiritual father. And I bring them to the normal aspects of life where we have blockages, be it relationship, finances, health, physical problems, emotional blockages, uh, mental restrictions and blockages, and of course, our spiritual world. The wisdom and teachings that I bring vary each week, sometimes day to day. <clears throat> so I encourage you to continue to come to watch more of these live streams because it will assist your soul journey. It will assist you to transform your physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual blockages. It will assist you in every way possible because the foundational teachings of Dr. and Master Shah is when you heal the soul first, the mind and the body will follow. Now today's subject is self-love. How to release the patterns that separate us from honoring ourselves. <clears throat> Everything has a root or a root cause. Everything has a soul. This is one of the foundational teachings. And we can address things from the psychological level we can address things in many different ways. There are many modalities to help relieve specific blockages. But you will discover that when you deal with things at the level of origination, the level of soul, the transformation of your finances, of your specific health issue, of your, uh, of your emotional blockage, your lack of worthiness in today's case, whatever it might be, can be directly impacted through soul power. So please stick around for this entire hour. Uh, if you're unable to, come back to my Facebook page, Paul Fletcher, and scroll down and you'll see today. It's, uh, every one of the days is recorded, so it's a great opportunity to transform your life. So I want to acknowledge those that are joining us today. <coughs> welcome CJ, welcome Shannon, and Sarah MacArthur. Hope you're feeling better today, Sarah. Welcome Ali, welcome Sharon Lackey, thank you for joining and welcome also Stephanie Cannon and Tatiana. Uh, thank you for those that have already hit the share button. I appreciate that. Welcome Linda Jansen and Elizabeth Falk. Good to see you. Welcome Jean and Angie Taylor. Welcome Melina. Thank you for sharing my information earlier today. <clears throat> and Raul. Good to see you, Raul. It is a virtual spiritual journey, isn't it? Thank you for the compliments, Raul. Happy to offer the blessings. Welcome, Pamela, and welcome, Esther. Welcome, Jean. So, more people will be coming. I see Jenny Brown has jumped in there. <clears throat> so, this subject is near and dear to a lot of people's hearts. We uh, do have a lot of blockages related to self-love and the inability to figure out how to get from where we're at to fully being honoring of ourself, which is really what self-love is. It's, it's making sure that we take care of ourself, not that we harm others along the way, but it's more like you, you can't help the person next to you until you have oxygen on yourself. It's more along those lines. And so we're going to be working with some very practical wisdom and practical techniques today. And I'll be incorporating some things that are common sense, <clears throat> but we'll be using soul power to bring about a much greater um, result with them. Okay? So, uh, welcome, Nerma. So let us go ahead and connect heart to heart, soul to soul first, <clears throat> placing our hands in soul light, soul service, hand position. And for those of you that have not yet hit the share button, please do so. Uh, it's, it's always wonderful to have this uh, spread. Um, we drop our left hand in front of our heart center. The right hand remains pointed towards the heavenly realms. Close your eyes. Some of you have had a very difficult day. Some of you are just waking up. Regardless of the condition, let us be fully present. Dear Divine, dear Tao, dear Source, 
dear our individual heavens teams guides angels and saints dear beloved Jesus beloved Mother Mary beloved Buddha Nam Amitofu Shakyamuni Fo beloved Kuan Yin Da Shurjur Pusa <clears throat> dear the soul of all beings serving the plan of the light side including all stars, planets, galaxies, and universes, the soul of the angels, healing angels, archangels, masters, and ascended masters, the soul of the lamas, sifus, gurus, bodhisattvas, and more, heaven saints and saints animals, heaven's generals and soldiers, we love you, honor you, respect you all, and I bow down to you. I'm deeply honored to call forth your names and ask you to be present today to please come to subdivide and sit in the heart centers of each of those present watching this live stream those who watch this day <clears throat> wherever they tune in I ask for you to assist this wisdom and teachings here today that as I do the practice is to bring the greatest possible benefit to all those that are watching please guide those that are watching to act upon this wisdom and apply it in their lives every day bless them to release whatever blockages might inhibit them from acting upon this wisdom that they can transform their life blockages that much better and faster thank you thank you thank you <clears throat> dear the source soul song of love peace and harmony love you honor you respect you and you please turn on in all souls and all universes we invite all souls in all universes to join with us, to chant, to connect our energies, release the blockages, and align our hearts and souls. For those that are new, please receive. Everyone else, please join in. Keep your eyes closed. Be fully present. Lula, lula, li. Lula, lula, la, li. Lula, lula, li, lula, lula, li, lula, lula, li, lula. Oh, I wash in Erling, oh, I tread redly, wong li, hing, rong, er, mu, shir, shang. Shong I ping on her I ping on her I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join our hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace and harmony how 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 thank you thank you thank you so again thank you all for coming <coughs> um who else has joined us here today i see carol Skakel has joined us welcome kathy berger uh welcome Kristen. welcome yvonne and rodney thanks for joining us rodney chelsea and marie harris welcome and dana knapp yeah, if I have not mentioned your name, I haven't seen it pop up, but uh, I'm honored to have your presence. So today is going to be on the subject of self-love and how to release the patterns that separate us from honoring our self. <clears throat> now, m uh, some of you may know, some of you may not know, that I have done a great deal of research on this, um, this subject in relation to soulmate because when I took on the task of applying the wisdom that Master and Shah brings to humanity with the subject of soul and soul mate, it just seemed like a very logical application since I've seen miracle after miracle, literally over a thousand of them, with the power of soul from everything from emotional blockages to pain to, to soul mates. <clears throat> I was very clear that it could make a substantial difference in people's lives, and it absolutely has. And there are many underlying factors as to why we have a lack of self-love. But I was able to identify uh, a great deal of them um, through this program, My Soulmate Attraction System. I won't be talking about that 
but I may refer to it occasionally because of the nature of the wisdom that I had learned through it and the applications of the wisdom teachings that Dr. Mesher Shah has brought to us to assist you in, in learning more about how to, to uh, release the blockages that inhibit us from honoring our self. I don't know if you paid attention to that verbiage, but I refer to it as not honoring ourselves. Think about that for a minute. Because when we do not honor ourselves, we are basically saying we're just a pile of crud on the floor. We're not worthy of it. We, we don't deserve it. So where did that come from? That's the first question. Where, where in the world did that come from, this lack of, of uh, love? for ourselves, this lack of even willingness to pick ourselves up, maybe choose a little bit better diet that will cause us to heal and, and live a little bit longer. <clears throat> maybe it's um, a choice to do what needs to be done so that we can have that little bit extra income. Maybe it's standing up for ourselves because that neighbor, that brother, that parent, or that uh, coworker is truly uh, very, very unpleasant towards us. And there needs to be a, um, a way in which we can communicate with a loving uh, modality but honoring of self. And so it's not about uh, standing up for ourselves and telling everybody else to piss off. That's not what this is about. This is more about <clears throat> finding the roots of how we chose this belief because it is a belief. So the first part of this is an understanding that when we uh, come into this physical world, <clears throat> we come front-loaded. And what that means is, uh, as a soul, we have a heaven's team. And collectively, there are decisions made, including our own soul's decision, as to who our parents will be this time around. Very likely could be ones we've had before. Um, what our life conditions would, generally speaking, look like. And uh, how they'll play out if all, all the factors work out well. Now, what happens is most of us come in uh, screaming and kicking, and uh, we go through a veil, it's called, <clears throat> that basically blinds us from all pre-existent knowledge. It allows the series of events to take place. Now, we are not, I repeat, we are not at the mercy of the stars and the, and how everything is aligning okay you are a creator you have total control over the overall result of what happens in your life now things may occur that you did not create uh, consciously um, a relationship might break up probably didn't create that consciously um, we might have a car accident you probably didn't create that consciously but we are creators and things uh, can happen to us and we can control those things that happen to us and that's where the karmic applications come into place so when we enter into this world we are helpless in many many ways because we're uh, at the mercy of those parents the peers brothers and sisters and all those that are a bit older than us <clears throat> so as a child between the age of zero and two uh, most of the children do not have uh, that advance of a communication process. So almost all of their information that they are receiving is coming from their observation, uh, which it happens through their five senses. Sense of smell, sense of touch, sense of taste, um, eyes and hearing, vision and hearing. <clears throat> Our five senses from the age of zero to two are the majority of what we bring in. Now. As a soul that has seven chakras, the m most important of those is the heart center, the heart chakra. The heart chakra of majority of the, of the infants that come in is very open, uh, full of love. And you can tell because you look at the children, you, they just radiate love. That's because their heart chakra is open. And so between the age of zero and two approximately, this heart chakra can be closed just based on the observations, just based on those five senses. Well, when, when the parent touches them, how often does the parent touch? Is the touch with love? Is the touch with anger? How is that touch given? Is it forceful? Is it gentle? <clears throat> um, 
How is the food that is given to them made? You might not think about this, but did we make the food with love? Or were we yelling out our spouse when we made the food? That food carries an energy. That energy may have been poisonous. And when that goes into the child, you, as a zero to two year old, could have had your heart closed even more from these things that were out of your control, so to speak. So there's many different variables, what the child sees, what the child hears. Their heart is very open to pure energies and pure frequencies. Where did they come from? We all came from the same place, the heavenly realms. So when we're born into this world, we come from the, the heavenly frequencies, the, the, the smells of the heavenly herbs and heavenly flowers, the sounds of the heavenly music, the light of the heavenly beings. And then we get uh, brought into this very unpleasant red dirt place and the shock begins. So um, as a child, all of us went through this exact same thing. Your children went through the exact same thing. We all go through this process. And in this, uh, when we come in, the heart goes through the process of closing up. If there hasn't been a deep honoring, there's that word again, honoring, <clears throat> of the love that we originally are. If you've been around this process of self-love and how to figure out how to reach self-love, you have heard before that it's about honoring yourself, it's about loving yourself, it's about forgiving, it's about accepting. Uh, there's so many different nomenclature that there's really nothing that it, it doesn't go in very far. It hits this guy up here and falls flat. We can't seem to open back up. So it starts with a recognition of the beginning, the root, okay? And just as cancer can hit somebody, uh, and it doesn't appear to be any apparent reason for it, like when a child has cancer or whatever it might be, the root is karma. So when we come in, if we have these uh, very loving, kind, considerate, nurturing parents that never yell at each other in your presence, and they're always loving and they, they're shining light, there are definitely children that grow up in that kind of environment. There's not uh, a huge amounts of them, but they are out there and there are parents like that. Don't we wish we had some of those? Um, but that occurs. Those parents are awake and aware. They recognize the nature of their actions and how it can impact the open heartedness of that child. And so as a child, we did not have those experiences in most cases. Maybe some of you did, but I, I would venture to say the majority of us did not, including myself. And so, as we move past the zero to two stage, uh, I, let me do a quick soul reading as to the percentage. <sighs> wow, scary. Um, what I was checking was what percentage of children in the whole world, hearts are forced to close heart centers, method centers, as a res in, in the first year to two years as a result of their upbringing. And it was between 85 and 90 percent. Let me check the percentage of heart closing. Yeah, that's, that's a blessing. The heart only closes about 45 to 50 percent, the message center, heart center. So, but think about that. Almost 50 percent closure of your message center for about, about 85 to 90 percent of the children on the planet within the first couple of years because of we come in with a veil over our eyes. We are unaware of um, our karma. And we are at the mercy of those that are our parents, peers, and those that are in our field. So then, around the age of two to seven, eight, nine, we're developing our personality. We are learning to say yes, we're learning to say no. We are adopting people's uh, personalities and accepting them as our own. When our parents tell us, don't do that, uh, uh, they tell us, they rarely tell us why, or if they do tell us why, it's because. And so, when we start going through this phase from two to eight, we um, receive a lot more of information. It's, it's thoughts, it's words, it's actions, it's information. Nowadays, we get information from the internet and television. 
Before, when we were growing up, we get information from parents, peers, spouses, kids. Now we get it from all that and internet and television. Just look around. How pure is this information that's coming in? Very, very, very impure. And so what this does is it continues to close the heart center. This combination of things that have sort of been out of our control have caused us to accept as a truth, this is, the, this is where the rubber is the road, they have caused us to accept as a truth a lack of honoring for self. Because when we witness parents uh, yelling at each other, they're not honoring each other, okay? That must be the norm. That's a belief. It's not even something that we accept as uh, we don't even go through the process. Should I believe that? Should I not believe that? We're young. We, we don't even have the filters yet to make a decision. Should I believe that? Should I not believe that? We just observe. And since the parents are the equivalent of our God as we're growing up, because they're, they're the number one and two in our life, we don't really um, have the filters with which to make conscious choices. And so our personality is formed from the early years, and it's formed from our observations, the five sen sen uh, senses, and all of those things that we have accepted as truth that we're not. So it could be that little boys don't cry. Okay, you, you, All those little things that um, close the heart. Um, it could be that uh, it's not okay to, uh, to show your feelings. It, some parents teach that, right? <clears throat> or the, um, here's a really important one I find quite a bit. We all have an extremely limited feeling vocabulary, guys, of course, but also women. Very, very limited feeling vocabulary. How do you feel? I feel angry. I feel sad. I feel, sad. I feel um, what? Think, think of a few more. You might not be able to get past 10 as far as feelings. Women can usually find at least 10. Guys, we're stuck at three, four, five. And so the uh, experiences that we witness, we observe, that we're a part of, cause our heart to close, and we literally adopt a belief system that causes us to have low self-esteem and a lack of self-love. Now, the short version of this is that we don't have any control over it at those ages. It's karmic, it came to us. Some of you went through horrific childhoods. I see Marianne, I had a horrific childhood. <clears throat> um, and sometimes these come to us. Uh, by our karmic choice, our soul knows it's gonna come and it may come as a result of a horrific childhood we caused upon others, but we have the opportunity to A, clear it up, and B, be a healer for others that go through horrific childhoods. Maybe that was our intention, because if we were so uh, unpleasant to others in previous times, if we can help others to not have terrific childhoods, that can clear up that karmic debt. Everything has interconnection, but most of us have to become 30, 40, 50, 60 years old before we wake up enough to recognize the truths of how karma and how karma works, how this last statement holds water. We, can't, we have to wait through half our life before we wake up to that reality. So life is quite difficult in that we come in without knowing what's going on, we're put through a mill, we go through half of our life before we wake up to realize why we went through that mill, and the rest of it is trying to unwind it. Sounds like a wonderful experience, right? So why did we come here? Well, we're here. I don't know the why other than we're here to clean it up and find our way back home. But I do know that soul power works. I do know that soul power will give us the opportunity to transform these as quickly as possible. And with this baseline understanding, you can release a lot of things. First of all, if you recognize the karmic implication of things, you can quit being the victim and you can stop blaming the parent, the spouse, the spear, the person that molested you, whatever it is that you've been blaming. It's just an excuse. It truly is an excuse to keep your heart closed. It's an excuse to not uh, recognize the, the cyclical nature of life, and it would not be in your highest and best interest to hold on to that victim mindset. What would serve you a whole lot better <clears throat> is to recognize that as a child growing up, you did not have the opportunity, the choice, or the intellectual ability to make choices of how you received this information, which caused you to adopt 
false beliefs. False beliefs of a lack of worthiness, false beliefs of a lack of love, false beliefs of I'm not good enough, false beliefs of I'll never find someone who loves me, false beliefs of I'm this, I'm that, I'm too overweight, I'm too, too, too dark, I'm too white, I'm too, people don't like red hair, people don't like people with six toes, whatever belief you have chosen to adopt as truth, it's false. And somewhere along the line between childhood and adulthood, you accepted these false teachings. You made them true. So now we say, okay, I see this very big picture. How can I unwind this? This is where it gets fun. This is where we can actually apply the soul power. Now, this soul power will sound a little bit like uh, affirmations. The difference the difference is we're going to be applying authentic forgiveness, we're going to be applying soul power and soul tapping, not tapping, soul tapping to release the blockages, and we'll apply uh, specific affirmations, which I will post at the end because I can't post it while I'm live, so you'll have them to reflect back on. <clears throat> and as you do this, what in essence you're doing is you're unwinding the beliefs that you had held on to. When you unwind the beliefs that you've held on to, you can manifest a whole new future. I'm going to touch on my soulmate system for a minute so you can see a tie-in here. When, um, when I'm working with people on my soulmate attraction system, I'm, I point out to them that they have a conscious pulse and an unconscious pulse. They're going two different directions. The conscious pulse says, I want this person with this kind of qualities, this kind of attributes. I want to make sure they don't have this, don't have that, don't have this, don't have that, never want to do that again, blah, 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 blah. So they have all their do's and don'ts. And down here is the unconscious pulse, and it's bringing them what they're not wanting every time and time and time again. Why does that occur? Same thing as we're going up as a child, because we have these unconscious beliefs, we have these fears, we have these karmic implications, and we set ourselves up for failure because we haven't removed them. What I'm going to be doing with you today is a process of removal. When they are removed, that underlying pulse that keeps you in the state of a lack of self-love, it will dissolve. You have to be consistent with it. You apply soul power, use higher deities, ask God, ask Jesus, ask Buddha, ask them all to come. Use your downloads and transmissions, some of the ones I gave you yesterday. Um, use everything you've got in your arsenal that's of a higher frequency and higher soul power and apply this practice we're going to do today and you will transform the underlying magnetic pulse and you will be a person that attracts and accepts love. You'll be a person that honors yourself and refuses to allow people to walk on you. Doesn't mean you're going to be rude. You're just going to say, I choose not to accept that way of communication that you're communicating to me. If you're not willing to communicate me in an honoring way, then we're going to have to go different directions. You will have that kind of strength. You will have that because you will have removed the blockages. Okay, so I'm going to list the uh, steps first and then we'll actually do some practices. Now, um, the affirmations, I'll read them one by one by one. <clears throat> and the first thing I want you to understand is what we have accepted as our truth around being lovable is a lie. It's just, it's a flat lie. And you have to be aware of that. How do you become aware of it? Just look at the first half hour of this conversation. Just watch it two or three or four times until it sinks in and you go, aha, I got it. It's false. Everything that I was taught was false. It is not about blaming anybody. It's not mom and dad's fault. It's not the, the brother or sister's fault. It's not the church's fault. It's not anyone's fault. If you hold on to that, you have an underlying magnetic pulse that is hurting you and it will not allow you to move to a place of self-love and honoring. So you're not allowed to hold on to victimhood through this process. You must step into acceptance and reflecting of the truth of how we brought into this world and the karmic implications. You then go through the process of self-forgiveness and forgiving the others. That's part of these, these uh, affirmations I'm going to be using. It will include self-forgiveness and forgiveness of others and a resetting 
of the magnetic pulse. Okay. So these are the steps. This is the process. Um, and again, if you did this without soul power, you would have some impact, but doing it with soul power, <clears throat> that's what makes all the difference in the world. <clears throat> because the soul is the carrier of our karma. The soul is the, is the root. Heal the soul first. The mind and body follows. And so, um, and I'm going to give you a visual. What we're going to be doing is at the, the physiological, psychological, emotional level. But it doesn't matter with this example that I'll give you that is a physical level based example. It applies the same because karma doesn't stop at the physical level. Karma affects us emotionally. It affects us in relationship. Karma affects us in every aspect of life. So to understand heal the soul first and the mind and body follows, some of you have heard this before. Some of you are new. You're hearing it for the first time. The soul looks just like you. Hangs out in heaven. Hangs out with you. The soul is not limited to your body. It can be in many places. But the soul is not 100% pure light. It has dark spots. That dark spot is a reflection of the karma that has been um, accumulated through all of the life experiences. And if there has been damage caused upon others from physical world choices, let's say in the neck, then that means at the soul level, that beautiful light being, your soul, will have darkness around the neck. That's the karma. So soul healing addresses it up there, not here where you're suffering as the victim. Doesn't work if you address it down here, guys. Works, but nominally. And even if you resolve it in this lifetime, it'll come back next time it's lifetime because you didn't resolve it at the root. The root is the karmic implications. That's what brought about all your life conditions that you've been living in. So when you receive soul healing through like the, the special services that I can offer, or you do it through these practices we're going to show you here today, what these are doing is you're, you're, you're erasing these karmic blockages little by little by little at the emotional level, whatever it is that caused you to accept this self-belief system that's been harming you. Um, if you receive divine services, it just goes in there with a, with a massive fire hydrant and just wah, washes them all away. Makes life a whole lot easier, a whole lot faster. Uh, either way, it works because you're dealing with it at the level of source. Down here, the physical body, it's a reflection. So if I did a divine service blessing for somebody's neck, the blockages at their soul neck goes away. The physical body has to change to represent what happened up there. Check in with anybody that's received a divine service. They'll validate it. That's exactly what happens. Their pain goes away, sometimes instantly, sometimes in a very short period of time afterwards because the root blockage was removed. So using that as the example, we want to apply that same wisdom to the practices that we're doing. We're basically pulling out our personal erasers and we're erasing the karmic implications that brought us the set of conditions where we closed our hearts as children, accepted the false teachings of we're not worthy and everything else that comes along with that. And we're just erasing and then we're going to replace them. Okay. At the level of soul, that's where we're replacing them at. Then your mind and body here at the physical world will change with you. Okay, so I'm going to read these real quick, <clears throat> um, and then we're going to actually practice them. <clears throat> so the, the mantras that we're going to be working with is, I forgive myself for accepting false information from my parents, peers, and family. Because you did accept that information. But we have to forgive ourselves because that's one of the ways we beat ourselves up. The second one, <clears throat> I love and forgive myself and permanently release negative self-talk. The next one, I love and forgive myself and permanently release negative memories. The next one, I forgive others, important, I forgive others for any thoughts, words, and actions that I allowed to create these false beliefs. We must forgive the others, especially if you've been staying in victimhood the entirety of your life. Oh, woe is me. It's everybody else's fault. I don't know why it always happens to me. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, you can choose to stay there, but you're not doing yourself any favors. Um, so the next one is, I was born perfect, whole, and free of unworthiness. Now we're resetting 
the magnetic pulse. I was born whole, perfect, and free of unworthiness. The next one, and we're going to practice all these, so don't worry about it. We'll have time to practice them. I am still perfect, whole, and free of unworthiness. I was born, and I am still. So you're reminding yourself, and you're validating that truth. And the last one we're going to work with is God loves me completely because I am his perfect child. That was the truth before you came in. It's still the truth today. It's never not been the truth, but we have been completely unable to accept it because of the closing of our heart and the beliefs that we have accepted from the equivalent of what is, you know, you think about it as a child, the equivalent of God was our parents, our peers, those that taught us for the first couple of years were our gods until we were taught otherwise. And so um, that's why we've accepted the teachings as a truth when in fact often, especially the ones that harmed us, are false. So let us do the practice and we're going to use the soul power, uh, body power. Sit up straight, back away from the back of the chair, feet flat on the floor. <clears throat> Sound power is the mantras, the different sentences. So I'm going to say it, you are going to repeat. I'm going to say it, you're going to repeat. You're going to be keeping your eyes closed as we're doing this, okay? So your creative visualization is, and you're going to be doing a soul power called soul tapping. I'll explain it in a minute. But your creative visualization is that as you're doing the soul tapping, <clears throat> you're going to see light flashing. Each time you tap your body, your light's going to flash in your body. The light's clearing blockages, clearing negativity, clearing negativity, bringing positive, bringing love, bringing God. So whatever mantra we're on at that moment and you're tapping, just zzz, 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 that's what your visualization is. Light, clearing, 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 making new, making new. Got it? That's your creative visualization. So body power, you're sitting up straight. Mantra, that's your sound power. Visualization, I just explained. Now, soul power. We're going to do soul tapping. Soul tapping is soul guided tapping. Some of you know about tapping, EFT. Tapping EFT is tapping here, then 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 tapping here and, da -da 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 -da, and you do it in a very specific order. That works sometimes, but it doesn't deal with things at the level of soul. Soul tapping knows exactly, exactly where that root blockage originated. It knows if that blockage is sitting in your kidney uh, related to fear. It knows if it's sitting in your liver related to anger. It knows if that root blockage is in your heart center. It knows if it's in your brain from a negative mindset or a belief. Soul knows where the root blockage is. We don't need to worry about where to tap. We're going to let our soul guide our tapping. And so we're going to start by tapping our hands wherever our hands want to go. You might tap the inside of your finger, the outside of your finger, the side of your arm. You might tap your head. You might tap. You can tap wherever you want, but more importantly, tap wherever your soul guides you to. Let go of any consciousness about where you're tapping. Just continue to tap, and I will lead you through the mantra and the change of mantra each time. Hopefully, the explanation is clear. Okay? Close your eyes. <clears throat> Place our hands in soul light, soul service hand position. Let us connect at the level of soul. Repeat after me. Dear God, dear the source, I love you, honor you, deeply, deeply respect you. I ask for forgiveness for this in any lifetime that I have blamed you for the suffering I have experienced in any lifetime. I sincerely apologize. I ask you to be with me now, God, and all of the beings of light that were invited in earlier today to bless me to release my self-love blockages. Bless me to open my heart again to fully accept and receive love from everyone and everything, especially loving myself. Thank you. Continue to repeat. Keep your eyes closed. <coughs> dear the soul of soul tapping, dear the soul of my hands, 
I love you, honor you, and appreciate you. Could you please tap my body wherever is needed to release the root blockages? I am very, very grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And so as I lead you through the repeating of the mantras, start tapping your body, visualizing the light shining with each tap all throughout your body. Let us begin. I forgive myself for accepting false information. Repeat after me. I forgive myself for accepting false information from my parents, peers, and family. I forgive myself for accepting false information from my parents, peers, and family. I forgive myself for accepting false information from my parents, peers, and family. Continue to tap. Allow your hand to go wherever it needs to go. <clears throat> I forgive myself for accepting false information from my parents, peers, and family. I forgive myself for accepting false information from my parents peers and family I forgive myself for accepting false information from my parents peers and family I love and forgive myself permanently and release negative self-talk. I love and forgive myself and permanently release negative self-talk. Continue to tap wherever your hand wants to go. Just let it go wherever it wants to go. I love myself, love yourself, I love myself and I completely forgive myself and permanently release negative self-talk. I love myself, I honor myself and I forgive myself and I permanently release negative self-talk. I truly love and honor myself. I forgive myself with the greatest love and I permanently release negative memories. I love myself and I forgive myself and I permanently release all negative memories. Continue to tap, continue to allow your hands to release wherever the mindsets are. I love myself. Give yourself a big hug. I love myself. I honor myself. I respect myself. And I forgive myself. And I permanently release negative memories. I forgive others for any thoughts, words, and actions that I allowed 
that created these false beliefs. I forgive others. Everybody, I forgive you for any thoughts, words, and actions that I allowed to create my false beliefs. I forgive others for any thoughts, words, and actions that I allowed to create these false beliefs. Please forgive me for blaming you and acting like I was a victim. Please forgive me for blaming you and acting like I was the victim. Please forgive me for blaming you and acting like I was the victim. Please Forgive me for blaming you and acting like I was the victim. Continue to tap. Notice where you're tapping now versus where you were when you started. Your soul knows exactly where to tap your body. Let it go. Please forgive me for blaming you and acting like I was the victim. I love myself. I now know I was born perfect, whole, and free of unworthiness. I love myself. And I now know that I am perfect, whole, and free of unworthiness. I love myself. And I now know I am perfect, whole, and free of unworthiness. I love myself and I now know that I am perfect, whole, and free of unworthiness. Give yourself a big hug. I love myself. And I now know that I am perfect, whole, and free of unworthiness. God loves me completely because I am and have always been his perfect child. God loves me completely. Smile as God loves you completely. Because I am and have always been his perfect child. God loves me completely because I am and have always been his perfect child. God loves me completely and unconditionally because I have always been his perfect child. God 
loves me completely and unconditionally because I am and have always been his perfect child. Continue to feel God's love. He is in you. God sits in every one of your cells. God sits in all of the little energy and matter along the DNA and the RNA strands that make up your cells. God is in every speck of you. God loves me completely and unconditionally because I am and have always been his perfect child. God loves me completely and unconditionally because I am and have always been his perfect child. Continue to repeat and I will offer a blessing while you are silently repeating. God loves me completely and unconditionally because I am and have always been his perfect child. Continue to repeat. Blessing begin. I love you. 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 So you may now come out of your healing practice. Please share what has been your experience. What was it like for you to fully release into the soul tapping and to release some of the mindsets, the victim perspective you may have been holding on to. Maybe for the first time today you had a new aha even though you understood a lot of what was said. Please share what that aha was. And while you're sharing, I want to invite you to uh, come to any of the events that are happening at Master Shah's Healing Center in Honolulu. Um, we have a lot of events happening, including this weekend. There's a healing circle this weekend. It is complimentary. It's a Divine Healing Hands Healing Circle. You can find it at drshaw.com. We have an open spiritual channels this weekend, and there's some other excellent uh, workshop on Saturday. 
Um, these are profound because they're coming from the center and the frequency there is just amazing. Also, <clears throat> if you wish to have specific blessings for this condition, releasing the blockages that separate us from honoring ourselves, I do offer this in the form of a crown chakra blessing. And if the blockages are very deep, you might want to look at receiving a healing and transmission system for releasing the blockages at the message center. Um, the crown chakra blessings are only an honor fee of 100, and the, uh, the message center is double that. Uh, but the, the second one comes with uh, new Shen Qi Jing, a complete removal of many of the karmic blockages, light wall protection. It's a lot more potent, therefore it's a little more financially. But uh, it will save the average person any, anywhere between 10 uh, and 100 years of their own service, doing their own practices on their own, and very potentially could save you many, many, many lifetimes of unnecessary suffering. So if you're in a position where you would like to consider the divine services, come to my website, asoulhealer.com, and just look under the, the healer information there. Um, also, you can, you can call me, 8 Four six nine sixty one ninety nine. My phone number is listed all over my website. It's also uh, you can reach me through email asohealer at yahoo.com <clears throat> or through Facebook Messenger. Just messaging me right directly on Facebook. Um, so I'm going to read some of the comments. Okay, so Melina says, I had an aha moment that my root issue was that I had an idea about how a guy was supposed to teach us because I saw how my mom was treated when I was seven or eight years old. Wow, great aha moment. Um, Eleanor says she felt a lot of warming uh, and knows that she's truly loved by God. Beautiful. And then also Melina saw beautiful lights and felt unconditional love. Tammy Hunter said she had a vision. Wonderful. I'd love to know what that vision is, Tammy. Loveness says, thank you, thank you, thank you. And Tammy said she felt very warm. Tatiana, thank you, Master Paul. She felt movement in her kidneys and cold sensation in her feet. It was fabulous today. Thank you so much. And that's very important. Tatiana has some kidney concerns. So beautiful. The healing was affecting you there. Lori, she felt much lighter and truly blessed. Thank you, Lori. And thank you, Kristen, for all your shares. She's put in quite a few links uh, for you to follow to, to contact me or any of the information uh, here today. As soon as we're off, I will um, put this list of these mantras and uh, you can reflect back on them, okay? And uh, Raul says, the insights about the process of birth, the impact of sensorial experiences and the closing of the centers really made some insightful connections for him. Yes, uh, me too, because that was not something I've ever thought about and it was not something I've ever written or spoken about until today. This is the nature of divine wisdom. I asked prior to going live, I asked all the holy beings to come to sit with me to guide me to serve you. And that came out at that moment. It's very accurate, but I had not considered it either. So it goes to show you the value of uh, divine communication. And all of us have the ability to have this form and level of communication. You might want to consider this Sunday, uh, Master Shah's Tao Healing Center. Uh, he's offering an open spiritual channels class there. Um, or one of the worldwide representatives is. So again, you can find that at drshaw.com under the events section. Just go to Hawaii. Um, Tawana says, felt light, relieved, and a lot of tapping on her heart center and lower abdomen swaying. Monica, greatest gratitude, many blessings and words. Very blessed. Thank you. <clears throat> Uh, Sharon says, I felt a shift in her heart and soul, felt more connected with the Creator. Her emotional body is getting better. She's been very emotional lately and she's been speaking about her childhood lately. Good. So this will give you some good insights. Ali, I felt a lot more clearer than before. Thank you, uh, Paul. You're very welcome. Nirma, Master Paul, I felt that I released a lot of false belief. Thank you so much for the incredible teaching and practice. Thank you, Master Shah. We always offer credit. I know nothing if it wasn't for Master Shah and all of the blessings he's given me. Even the blessings that allow me to offer this information. It wouldn't be without my spiritual father. Um, Sarah, lots and lots of tears, lots of tapping behind the ears. Interesting. Uh, ended up tapping the heart. 
and, and God's voice, hearing God's voice. Beautiful. Whole body cells tapped, vibrating. Shari, this is a great healing practice. A little emotion. Tammy. Uh, she says her vision, it was a man, I'm not sure who it was, either a picture or a man sitting in a windowsill. Okay. Uh, could, could potentially be um, a soul or someone from your Heavens team or one of your protectors. Okay. And welcome, Johannes. And so thank you everybody for coming. If you have any questions about um, what we covered here today, Divine Services, I invite you again to be aware that I'm offering the gift certificates for anyone that you care about. You can find those on my website. Um, and if you cannot, please let me know. I'm, I'm trying to, to make it obvious to find them, but um, I'm having a little difficulty with that. And then also um, the, the monthly blessings, um, two blessings a month. They're, they're uh, very powerful blessings. I've been incorporating some calligraphies and some healing treasures that I have. Uh, you can change your mind with each blessing, and it's twice a month, and it's only $30 if you agree to an automatic deduction. So it's very, very affordable, certainly something you uh, may be able to do for yourself or a loved one, uh, or even a pet. Many times our loved ones are our pets. So um, consider that. That's very uh, clearly dis demonstrated on my website. It's all listed at the, the very bottom. Um, so love you all. Thank you for coming. Let me check one thing on tomorrow. Okay, so um, I haven't decided what I'm going to be doing yet tomorrow, but please tune in, tell your friends about this, hit the share, hit the share button if you're new. Please uh, consider subscribing. There's a button right on the upper corner of this video. And um, uh, if there's anything else, please let me know. Love you, love you, love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Love to all the holy beings. Respectfully return. Gong song, gong song, gong song. Bye-bye, everybody.